Greetings, my name is Stefan Haggard. I'm the editor of the Journal of East Asian Studies. I've been previewing some of the work we've done recently at the journal. And today I'm gonna to talk briefly about a paper uh, by Junnak Che and, and Jiyun Hong called Social Networks as a Political Resource, Revisiting the Korean Democratic Transition. I particularly like this paper because I've always been curious about this important period of, of Korean history, 1987 to 1990, where you have the transition uh, and then the No Te Wu wins the election, despite the fact that the majority of voters are in favor of either Kim Yong Sam or Kim Dae Jung. And then in 1990, quite surprisingly, Kim Yong Sam ends up merging his party with an authoritarian incumbent party, which basically takes him to the Blue House. And the explanation which is developed here is, is quite novel in my view from uh, other studies of the democratic transition in Korea more generally. One of the things that the paper does is it constructs a data set of all the legislators in the National Assembly during this period. And it shows quite interestingly that the network connections between Kim Dae-jung's followers and Kim Jong-sam's Jong followers were actually weaker than those between Kim Jong-sam's followers and the authoritarian incumbent. It's a quite surprising result. But it, has, um, it allows us to explain both the party merger of 1990, but also this question of why the parties, uh, opposition parties in particular, are weakly institutionalized in Korea. Check it out.